we just he's just still at the stage where he needs to be watched all the time and of course this one has not one not two but three that came up okay pull on that very gently the soil is moist so the stuff comes apart very easily I set it on top of the soil in here so that I can go get another pot everything was so intertwined I didn't notice that there were three seedlings in that cell instead of two. I'm hoping that these will be able to go out to the greenhouse really soon, like in the next week. I think our temperatures are supposed to get a little warmer. And I can cover them with row covers to keep things warmer. It's getting plenty warm in there during the day. There's no doubt about that. It's toasty in there. I mean, you could work up a sweat standing in there right now. But at night, it might be a little chilly still. So, and I am going to do short on pots. Oh, that's annoying. <laughs> Truly annoying. Some boy that I know over there who's busy eating cart road or chewing on it at least right now is not going to be happy if I have to run out to the greenhouse. He did not like me running out to the yard to help daddy when daddy needed his. Uh, lights on the car wash to before he left. We have a state trooper who is very full of himself who likes to harass the locals in the area and uh, we try to provide him with no opportunities whatsoever to do that. That's looking better. But I am running out of room and that could mean just one thing. I need Jack, I mean Rufus. Rufus, you're making a terrible mess, you know that? You're making a terrible mess. He says, this is such good cardboard, it tears up beautifully. Except that I, <laughs> he has tape stuck to his foot. Let me get your tape off your foot. There we go. You are a stinker. Okay, now I'm gonna have to wing this. So, this is gonna go up here. This is going to go over here, and this is going to go over here. Now I have only four more pots, which is not even sort of enough. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen. I need at least twenty because I think there's a couple of spares in there. And that means I'm also going to need a larger bottom tray. Okay, so I will be back. I am back. <laughs> oh, we're having a bad case of spazoid today. I can tell I am just terribly out of practice with this whole transplant and plant and all that other stuff. What I have done is I have gone out to the greenhouse. I have gotten a large tray for Haas tools. And I, trans I transferred everything from the smaller tray into the larger tray. So now I have room. Now I may not have enough room for everything. If I don't, I have the other smaller tray on the floor behind me here that I can use. I also got a whole ton of more of these guys from the greenhouse. So theoretically, I now have enough pots to transplant everything that is left. And I got everything carefully arranged so that we, uh, Sorry, I'm hearing a DOG do something. What are you doing? You need to go lay in your bed and squeak your toy or something. That would be a great thing to do. Yes, it's true. I'd rather listen to a dog squeak a toy than wonder what he's doing. <laughs> it's kind of like when you have little kids and it gets quiet all of a sudden. You know something bad is happening. Because if they're being too quiet, they're into some sort of trouble, unless they're taking a nap. And even then, they could still be in some sort of trouble. I'm going to get a bunch of these started up so that I can make some better progress here, because, geez louise. <laughs> what I'm doing is I'm filling these about half full with soil. I'm not concerned about these being completely full of soil, because... Oh, I'm just not. The uh, 
They're going to be transplanted again, and I'm hoping it'll be fairly quickly, but with things going the way they have this winter, gosh only knows. Uh, but I want to have enough room in these so that they can grow and not be constricted by the pot, have enough dirt and all that other kind of stuff. But I'm not trying to grow them to like full maturity or anything. So it's kind of a balancing act. I'm also trying not to make too big a mess because this is the dining room. I actually much prefer to do this in the greenhouse. Like I say, it is so noisy out there right now. You would not be able to even vaguely hear what I'm saying. And I want to keep these in for at least a day or two, even if the weather is moderate, because that way I can fuss over them in here very easily. And uh, I don't have to worry about you not know, losing track of things. And, I think I have to worry about is spilling dirt all over the floor, and I'm the one who cleans up the floor most of the time, so it's okay. I'm allowed to spill dirt on my own floor. Because, <laughs> you know, if I planted one, it wouldn't have grown at all, but because I planted four, they all grew. Because that's the way it works. The laws of statistics. <laughs> now, these all fell down, like, in the same spot. And this is one of those instances when I'm going to very carefully sort of tease the plants apart from one another and gently pull the roots apart. And I'm going to plant them, and statistically, they will be fine. I did sort of spread the roots out as well as I could there because I want them to have... I'm, not, I'm trying to not damage them more than I have to. I know I've done some damage, but we're going to coddle them in here for a few days before they go anywhere, so it should be fine. And here's two more. Those are the same way. All sort of tangled up in one another. Make a place for the roots to go here. Get the soil in around it. Make sure all the roots are covered. Try and get the plant sort of centered in the middle of the pot. It doesn't have to be perfect. This is not a showpiece. This is just trying to get a transplant to come through, okay? Same thing with the last little guy here. I have one more. I have one more cell over here with TR cabbage in it, which means I have two more TR cabbage. Which will actually be perfect because I have got a whole block of TR cabbage here now. So that should actually be a nice collection of cabbage. I have two cauliflowers purple. Those were a gift from Deb and Bev. So we're going to try those. We've never, I don't even know if I've eaten purple cauliflower. I may have, but we're going to give it a try because why not? Somebody gave us some seeds and they're supposed to just taste like cauliflower. I don't really care that much what cauliflower looks like. What I care about is what it tastes like. So we'll see. Certainly worth a try. There's cauliflower purple. And cauliflower purple. This one doesn't lot look like it's particularly happy. We'll see how it works. Okay, let's see. What do we have here? We have one Atlantis. That's right. We only had one Atlantis seed come up. Now, Atlantis was our favorite broccoli for the last couple of years. It is um, what they call a mini broccoli, which means it puts out a small, like, the center head on it. It's probably only about that big. But then it'll put out, like, literally a gazillion side shoots. And it does that for months. So it's not a good commercial thing unless they're specializing in mini broccoli, obviously. So that, say, they might, somebody who's doing that might specialize in it for um, high end restaurants. But your average farmer is not going to fuss with that. However, uh, for a home grower, it's awesome because it's not one of those, okay, you cut it, now it's over parties. It is, you cut it, and now you get to eat it again and again and again as those side shoots all come off. Now, when I went to order this seed this year, I discovered it has been discontinued. So I have... Um, I think it's called sweet stem. Yeah, it is called sweet stem. It's supposed to be another mini broccoli that is even better 
Of course, we will not know that until we have grown it. And there's nothing I can do about it because this is not an OP. It's not a uh, an heirloom thing. It is a hybrid. So I am hoping we we decided to try and grow some of the Atlantis just so that we'd have a real accurate representation of what it is. In other words, sometimes you don't really remember that clearly from year to year. What you doing down there, Mr. Dude? I'm sniffing everything. I know, that's where the kitty usually is. So Miss Kitty is still hiding. <laughs> she, uh, she yelled at him again today <sighs> a couple of times. He can't figure out why she's yelling at him because he thinks kitties are cool. <laughs> she, however, is not convinced about a dog right this second, so it'll be fine. <laughs> we'll work it out. Um, I need to choose something that I only have two of. And that answer is going to be emerald broccoli, em emerald, woo, emerald, yes, it says emerald. Uh, emerald crown is what it is. So I'm trying to do a really accurate assessment this year to determine what's worth it and what's not. And you can't do that if you know what variety, don't know what varieties you have. I have dirt all over the place here anyway, so it doesn't matter if I get a little bit more on the table. The advantage of a black table is it doesn't show quite as bad. Now this is marathon broccoli, and once again, we had a finger fumble, so we wound up with three seeds instead of two, and we wound up with all of them in the same spots, which is really annoying. But I will get them split apart. And hopefully they will all survive. My recollection was Marathon Broccoli was okay, but it wasn't our favorite. But I had a bunch of seeds left, so we decided we'd grow them anyway and see what happens. And I want what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to uh, get to the point where I really know what I want every year. There's no question in my mind, and the only problem I have ever is when something gets canceled, <laughs> or if you have a crop failure. But then you'd still have records from some of the other stuff, so you'd know that this other one, while maybe not your very favorite in the world, is still a good variety. This is Green Magic. And I actually have a cute little label. Um, every once in a while, Haas Tools will actually show a, throw a cute little label in with their uh, seed packets. I don't know what their criteria is for it, but I think it's fun when you pop a seed packet open and discover you've got a label already in there. They use, they only give you one label, so it assumes kind of that you're planting the whole the whole uh, batch, which of course I'm not. It's still a cute thing, and it gives the same kind of information on it that that you know, like if you went to a, a big box store or a, a garden center, it would have all the information about the thing on it, the name and the brand and Oh, the basic information about how to grow it and stuff. So, yeah. There we go. Now I have exactly one cell left over here. And it has three plants in it. Yes, it has three plants in it. And this is Sweet Stem, which is the replacement for the Atlantis Broccoli. Some of these are looking great. Some of these are looking a little rough. But it's okay. We'll water them well. Ooh, do I even want to split that one? I don't know. That's a good question. Sometimes <clears throat> you look at them and you're like, okay, this one is easy to split. There's three here. This one is easy to split off. It's off on its, <clears throat> on its own on the far side of the container. And... Uh, Somebody wore themselves out, and they're not going to take a nap in the middle of the floor. That's okay. This one is really very tight. That came apart pretty well. Sometimes um, I will look at them to make sure that they're actually like two plants. I have had a couple of times when it was actually like a plant that had somehow split. In which case, I just leave them. And if I'm really concerned, like if I only had super limited seeds and I was really concerned about survival rates and stuff like that, I might just leave it. 
it makes it messier to harvest and grow them, but they usually make it okay. So there we go. I have an official mess. And I have two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, twenty, twenty-two, twenty-four, twenty-six, twenty-eight. 30, 32, 34, 36, 38, 40. I have 40 seedlings. Well, <laughs> so much for not growing too much. <laughs> okay, well, I'm going to clean up this mess a little bit more. I'm going to rearrange things so that I can uh, put this loose collection of seedlings into um, the other tray get everybody watered. Uh, before I move anything, I'm going to label the ones that are currently not labeled. But thanks for joining me on this little expedition, complete with background noise from a certain very cute fuzzy <laughs> Rufus on the floor, who is asleep now. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> just like kids. Seriously, just like kids. So until next time, be sure to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell, because obviously I'm going to be doing tons more. And uh, you'll have to come back to find out how all of this turns out. The hope, cross fingers, is that in about a week or so, I'll be able to plant these out into the greenhouse in 10-gallon tubs. And I will be planting a couple in each tub. I am probably going to not use the gigantic um, storage boxes that I used last year. I'll probably just stick with the tubs. I have a lot of them. I can put, depending on what I'm talking about, for the lettuce, I could probably put, oh, let's see, one, two, three. I could probably put all the lettuce in one 10 gallon container and just have it kind of fill out the top. Um, the pak choy, I'll probably put three or four or five, depending on how, I, how they look when they grow up a little bit more. And then I'll just, I'll thin them out by eating them. The uh, cabbage. We'll probably put two cabbage per 10 gallon bucket. Some people, if I was growing the giant ones, I would put one. Tiara cabbage is a small, what they call it, like a personal size head. It's perfect for two people. We like to have coleslaw and things like that a lot, but we don't need to have coleslaw that spoils before we could possibly eat it unless we want to eat it three meals a day. And although we really love coleslaw, two meals a day is enough. <laughs> so, uh, a cabbage head that's about this big is perfect for us. The stone head cabbage is a larger head, so I'll have to look and see how they grow. But I'll work it out, and you'll just have to come back and see it all. So, until next time, bye! Oh, and don't forget to keep on brainstorming, because obviously I didn't brainstorm as well as usual today, so I had to go run again and get more stuff. So, yeah, that happens. It happens. But... Once I knew what I'd done, I knew exactly how to fix it. So, backup plans. Always have backup plans. <laughs> Bye. Okay. Here we go. Everybody's been transplanted. Everybody's been watered. The ones that didn't fit in this tray are now in that tray. Ready to go. Ready to grow. Not the tidiest job I've ever done, but it should work just fine.